Welcome to PV Storytime, children's books read aloud. Memory Garden, written by Zore Garamani, illustrated by Susie Garamani. When I help Nana in her garden, she tells me the names of flowers and trees. Today we will plant more geraniums, she says. It sounds like fun, but what I love even more are the stories she tells me about a garden she knows far away. Back home, we would need a lot more than this, Nana says as she carries a box of flowers. We didn't have parks and playgrounds, so a big garden was the perfect place to play. I don't know where back home is. But Nana lived there when she was my age. I picked the first flower to plant. What color were your flowers? Every color you can imagine, and many big trees too. Nana says. Nana points to the fence. We had a line of tall, pointy cypress trees along the wall, and I used to pretend they were soldiers guarding me. She taps the pot, digs a hole, and puts my flower in it. I push the soil back over the roots and use my own yellow shovel to pack it just right. What about geraniums? I ask, proud to know the name. We had these too, but they grew in ceramic pots that were placed around the fish pond for flower beds. My mother preferred fragrant flowers, jasmines, lilacs, and hyacinth. What's a fragrant? It means good smelling. Some nights, going to the garden was like stepping into a bottle of perfume. Time to water them, Nana says. When we are done planting, she unrolls the hose, and it's my job to turn on the faucet. Then she hands me the nozzle, and I hold it over the flowers. Listen to the sound of water, Nana says. In our old garden, the trees got their water from a small stream. If we close our eyes, maybe we can still hear it. I shut my eyes and listen to the splish splash. Those trees sure gave a lot of fruit, Nana says. And I know this is where her stories get even better. We had apricots, cherries, and persimmons, and of course, the prettiest tree was the pomegranate. Its red fruits were like ornaments on a Christmas tree. During summer, my cousins would come by and climb trees with us. I sometimes picked a pair of cherries and hung them over my ears like big red earrings. Cherries are my favorite, I say, but Nana already knows that. She smiles. I like them too, and my favorite fruit is the mulberry. I've never seen mulberries. Nana says they are like blackberries that are actually white. And do you know how we harvested them? Four grown-ups would hold out a big sheet while someone climbed and shook the tree. White berries came down like pouring rain. I've never tasted a sweeter fruit. What kind of games did you play with your friends? Nana thinks for a minute and then says, "All sorts of games, and some of them you already know: hide and seek, hopscotch, jump rope." Our best times were when we would roll up our pants and go for an adventure along the stream. The water was cold and pebbles tickled my feet. She laughs. One time, we found a hedgehog all curled up into a ball. My friend tossed it into the water, and it popped its head out and swam away. I help Nana pick up the empty pots. Did you do all the gardening there? She laughs again. No, honey, that would be too much work. Our gardener took care of it all day. Every day, ours only comes once a week, which may be why Nana needs my help.
I knew that old gardener all my life. Nana says, sometimes he gave me a ride in his squeaky wheelbarrow. I see a snail has crawled into the box. Look, Nana. I wonder if she knows that when you tap their shell, snails will hide. You lucky girl. Our weather was too dry for them. So what kind of bugs did you have? Caterpillars, ladybugs, ants. She thinks a little. And lots of bees. We take everything to the waste bins. Close by, the bird feeders on Nana's apple tree are empty. I look for our regular hummingbird, but it isn't there today. Nana has told me the names of a few other birds too. They never come close when we are outside, but I can tell when they've been there because there's always a big mess. Can I fill the bird feeders? Of course, Nana says. But first, we should take a break. She picks a red apple for me and points to the big umbrella. Let's sit there, she says. Instead of these umbrellas, we used to sit under the shade of the willow tree. Nana says, stretching her legs on the chair. We'd rest on a large deck where my mother kept her samovar for afternoon tea. The only samovar I've ever seen is in Nana's kitchen. It keeps her tea warm all day. While I eat my apple, Nana turns too quiet. What happened to that garden, Nana? She takes in a big breath. We had to leave it. Can you go back and see it? Nana shakes her head. When we moved to this country, it was time to plant a whole new garden. I point to our flowers and say, "Well, I like this garden a lot." Nana gently strokes the back of my head. That's so nice to hear. She puts her arms around me and whispers, "Because when you really love a place, it keeps growing in your heart." Everyone, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you all enjoyed the story. If you like it, please give a thumbs up or share it, and remember to subscribe so you won't miss any new videos. Have a great day, and see you in my next video.